this is the object orthographic and dimensions. Um, so we'll be talking about how to put dimensions on your object. Um, I have a, um, a drawing here that was done by a student. So the assignment calls for, um, it says no straight edges. Now this drawing actually is done over a freehand drawing and then it was kind of touched up with uh, straight edges and maybe the curves were done by hand. So I'm going to leave it open. I mean, it is true that when you finish your drawing with a little bit of straight edge lines, it looks cleaner, but um, if you want it, you can do it completely freehand, and I'm not going to mark it down for that. Uh, as long as the proportions are correct, you can do a combination. You can do a sketch and then go back on with straight lines and finish it that way. This person also used uh, two different colors. You don't really see it, I think, on the screen, but um, you'll see it on the video here. Uh, so the main features were highlighted with uh, blue lines. Um, so let's talk about, depending on the size of your object, you might be able to fit it at full scale, which probably this is. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure, but uh, it actually looks a little bit smaller. So you need to decide, and you need to do a quick sketch to see um, how, how it would fit, right? So you need to literally do this with what I'm doing now and say, okay, you know, my phone is two inches, so I multiply two, four, six, maybe I have an inch there, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, that's pretty good, that fits, right? And you would go it by that, you would, you would do it like that. If you're doing simply half scale, then you would just measure your object and you would half it, right? Um, more complicated scales, you could use the, uh, the architect's uh, scale, which I'll go into more details later, but uh, for right now, I would say either to half or full size. Uh, if your object is really tiny, then you might need to enlarge it, right? To make it look decent on your sheet. The trick is to really get the spaces even, so that it looks good. Uh, ideally, all these spaces between the different views are all the same. And ideally, you have a nice label for each drawing. Uh, it's calling for six views, but depending on your object, you might not have room for that. So just put the views that are more interesting. Um, dimension lines. I would actually give you a separate document that has uh, what's called the alphabet of lines that spells out like different kinds of lines, different thicknesses. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on the dimension lines. And the way these errors are drawn here, actually in this drawing, is too big. Um, they don't need to be so uh, thick. And they, this actually is wrong. This, the error line should be here. Um, That's a mistake. Um, okay. Uh, also, what he did was he made the the lines, uh, the errors really uh, square, or rather uh, 45 degree angles like that. And instead, what we want them is we want them more pointy like that. Okay. They can be open. But they can be filled in. But that's, that's kind of the ideal shape. The ideal shape is about 2 to 1. Okay, so if that's 2, and this is 1. And the way to do it is you have your object, you leave a little gap before you start your, um, your uh, extension. Okay, like that. And that's a thin line. And then you have your dimension line, which is probably a little bit thicker. Okay, so if you have uh, diameters, you should show them. And there's a variety of ways to show them. In this case, I think the person just, just showed where the... Uh, uh, let's see, actually they didn't indicate them here. But let's assume there was a curve here. Um, so that could be shown by either with a straight line like that and a little arrow. And the line would have to go straight to the center of that original circle. 
so it looks better. In other words, if you have a, an arc like this and you put the line like that, it doesn't look so good because it's not going to hit the center, the extension of it. So you always want your arrows pointing to a, a radius to be... So let me focus on there. Um, to be pointing towards the center. Okay. So that is, you could just write radius, you know, point 0.25 inch or something like that. Um, what else? Depending on the complexity of your object, um, there's just not going to be a way to properly dimension certain features. You know, that's a continuous curve. So how are you going to show? You know, how are you going to show where? one piece of this curve stops and then it like starts. I mean that, you know, that's more elaborate stuff that you probably have to do on CAD and, um, you know, and for manufacturing the, the problem would probably speed out the shape to the tooling machine and so forth. But so just get the basics. Um, okay. Um, oh, just one quick thing, when you do your curves again, uh, just when you when you go over them and you want to finish the you know highlight them or make them crisper, just do your curves first, and then uh, and then do your lines. So that that way, and you can do the straight edge. That way, you get a nice connection there. Okay, I'll keep this simple. I'll just quickly show two other drawings, but since these are really for next week, the, um, um, the isometric and the um, exploded view, I won't say too much, except that um, the orthographic drawing gives you the information. I mean, in a way, again, like I said before, this is really the drawing that you would need to make the object, right? This gives you a nice sense of how it's put together, but I can't measure from this, right? Because everything is skewed. I mean, I could measure these sides, uh, but then I wouldn't be able to measure, you know, for example, this, this diagonal, what is that? Um, but in order to do this drawing, you need to really know where everything is. As you notice, he started using ellipses for the corners, so those ellipses should be probably shown as circles in this drawing, you know, just light circles. Um, and if you have templates, you know, like circle or ellipse templates, you could probably use them as well if you go back in and finish your drawing with a kind of a more crisp line. So, but again, we'll go over this next week. The, um, the video that's on iLearn, I believe, already shows uh, tips about how to do these drawings as well. So you could already um, look at that to get started. Uh, in terms of the exploded, well, of course, we're going to simplify your object, right? And the main thing, again, is that they're aligned. You know, all the parts are aligned vertically. stuff.